I'm here to talk about success. I went to college. I went and worked out five hours a day. And I was working on construction. Because in those days in bodybuilding, there was no money. We didn't, I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything. So I had to go to work. So I worked in construction. I went to college. I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. And this is why I'm standing here today. At the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. 74% hate their job in America. The majority of people don't like what they're doing because they're really not doing it because they didn't have a goal and they followed this goal. They just aimlessly drift around and all of a sudden there's a job opening so they get their job because you have to work. But then when you work, it's a chore. It's work. It's not fun. So if you think about only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard? Five hours a day, six hours a day, you have always a smile on your face. The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And they told people all the time, I said, because to me, I'm shooting for a goal. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me close to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I do, is that close to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2,000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. So let me tell you something, visualizing it more and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. Muhammad Ali worked his butt off. And I saw it firsthand. And I remember that there was a sports rider that was there in the gym and he was working out and he was doing sit-ups. And they asked him, how many sit-ups do you do? And he said, I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain. That's when you start counting. That is working hard. And so you can't get around the hard work, it doesn't matter who it is. Work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around, you have to work and work and work. Make sure of this, make sure of that and all that stuff. So it's work. And it drives me crazy when people say that I don't have enough time to go to the gym. 45 minutes a day to work out. Or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve. If it is physically improved, or if it is mentally improved. Imagine you need one hour a day about history. How much you will learn after 365 hours in one year. Think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on the business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because we have, when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day. So they give
shifts is still 18 hours. There's someone shaking their head out here in front and say, probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? But you sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day, the average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours, so we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with the six hours? Let me eat a little bit. Let me schmooze a little bit. Talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I hate plan B. <laughs> and I tell you why. Because we have so many doubters, as I've said earlier, the, the no saints. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it, it's impossible. That is okay because we just turn off, as I said earlier, and we listen and we hear the no being a yes, you can't do it, do it, you can do it and all of that. So that that is possible to do that amongst all the negative people around you. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous because now what you're basically saying is is that if my plan doesn't work I have a fallback plan I have a plan B and that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A It's very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that, is, that will protect me. And that's not good because people perform better when there's no safety net. People perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. I say I made a full commitment that I'm going to go be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm going to be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm going to get in the show business and I'm going to be a leading man. No matter what it takes, I will do the work. I will do the work over and over and over until I get it. The same was in politics and everything like that. So to me, it is very dangerous to have a plan B because you're cutting yourself off from the chance of really succeeding. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. What is if I fail, then I don't have anything else? Well, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. You have to fail in order to climb that ladder. There's no one that doesn't fail. Like Jordan said in one of his interviews, when they said, you're unbelievable, you're the greatest basketball player of all times. I mean, tell me about that. He says, well, you just mentioned the successes. But he says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots. I was playing basketball at the NBA games. So during these games that he was so successful, he missed 9,000 shots. Does it make him a failure? No. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all times, but he failed 9,000 times. Do you get it? We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. Whoever stays down is a loser. And winners will fail and get up, fail and get up, fail and get up. You always get up. That is 
a winner. That is a winner. I failed in bodybuilding. I, failed. I lost bodybuilding competitions. I lost powerlifting competitions. I lost weightlifting competitions. I had movies that went to the toilet that were terrible, got the worst reviews. And in politics, I remember, I had many of the initiatives and the ballot, and we lost. My approval rating in California went down to 28%. And then it went back up again, and they won again the governorship. Hey, we all lose. We all have losses. This is okay. And this is why I say don't be worried about losing, because when you're afraid of losing, then you get frozen. You get stiff, you're not relaxed. You got to be, in order to perform well in anything, if it's in boxing or if it is on your job or with your thinking, it's only happening when you relax. So relax. It's okay to fail. Let's just go all out and give it everything that you got. That's what it is all about. So don't be afraid to fail.